Okay. So, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Grandmaster Arbi Ramesh here from Proches Training. And in today's session, uh, as usual, we are going to analyze some training games uh, which we are given to our students, our subscribers. And they have been playing some games every week with uh, players of similar standard. And the whole point is to give them some interesting so, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So the point is to expose them to different kinds of positions when we are not playing in any competitions due to this lockdown. It's very instructive to play in interesting positions against the players of similar standard. So in the last week, we had seen a very complex position, but uh, in today's session, it's a complete contrast. It's going to be a quite broken pawn and game. And uh, when I was young, I remember I was not very keen on end games. I was more of an aggressive player, tactical player, who preferred to calculate or and uh, attack the opponent, and also to play mainline opening theory. So I was mostly a theoretical, aggressive, and a player who relied more on attack and calculation and opening theory. This was my style. But when I wanted to improve my strength further, then I understood I have to work on my endgame skills and positional play too. And that is when I, one of the first endgame books I got was Rubinstein's 100 Best Games. So Rubinstein was a very good endgame expert and also a good positional player. But when I got the book, I did not know that. So I used to go to uh, one of the uh, big, biggest mentors in Indian chess, Mr. Dakshina Murthy. He's not there anymore. Uh, back in, back then, uh, he lent his house, you can say, that in his house, he had many chess boards and clocks. He also had a good collection of chess books. And back then, there were no computers and so, and so on. So we had to, Indian players did not have uh, access to good books also, because most of the books were published abroad. And uh, only chess mate company, it was importing the books and selling it in India. But back then those books were uh, considered to be very expensive for us to buy. So Mr. Dakshamuti, he had a good library at home. So we used to go there and uh, borrow the books. And we used to give it, give those books for free. So we take the books home, we see the book games and then return the book to him. And we also went to his home and other chess lovers, they came there. So we could uh, play against each other, blitz games, and so on. So in our formative years, all this helped. And uh, he lent me the Rubinstein book, and this was one of the games I studied first. And uh, I thought, OK, this portion is quite boring, not much tactics. But the more and more I uh, saw, I understood the beauty of even quite end games. And uh, suddenly, a new window kind of opened in my chess arsenal. And then I started working more on my end games, and that improved my chess strength and helped me to become a grandmaster later on. So please don't ignore any area in your chess training. Okay, so every aspect of the game is very important opening, middle game, middle game, everything. So we should not neglect any area. So let us go to this position, which, we, which was played by our students. So in this game, Spielman, Rudolf Spielman was white and uh, Akiba Rubinstein was black, played 1909, more than 100 years ago. But even if a modern grandmaster plays this kind of an end game, he'll be very proud to have played such a nice game. So here Rubinstein played the Rook A8. Now, when we uh, are playing for a win, like what are the psychologies we need to employ we will see that as well now the pawn is under attack and white has two options one he can defend the pawn with rook a2 or he can defend the pawn with rook c3 okay so basically in rook and pounding there is a principle which is called rook behind the pass pawn okay so from that angle rook a2 makes sense so let us see what could have happened with rook a2 now the idea is just to advance the pawn as fast as possible. And the other idea is to get the king into the game towards the, close to the center. 
Okay, and if the black king tries to go towards the a pawn, then the white king will uh, enter to the king side. So imagine if the king goes here, the white king will come to the king side in this path. Okay, so <clears throat> we should generally try to not let opponent pass pawn to advance. This is also quite important. We should block the pass pawn as quickly as possible. So rook a4, now this pawn is hanging. Now by pure process of elimination, we can see that these two cannot move. Moving the h pawn or f pawn also do not help. Okay. And seeing that the pawn on d4 is under attack, many of us will want to play this move, right? d5. Now in this case, black has two options. One, he can come back and take the pawn any day, or you can uh, get the king to come up and take the pawn, okay? Because the white king anyway will be under cutoff. So black can uh, try to get the king up and win the pawn and then advance the king to roll the pawn forward, okay? So, but this is something we will all want to play. But how white should do instead is not play defensively, not waste one critical time, whereas the king was in a very bad position, right? So you can use the time to get the king into active position. So when he comes here, he comes close. So I have to save the pawn. Okay, so the point is, whenever you take this pawn, he will start rolling, and it is not easy for the rook to block the pawns here. So you may have to find a longer path like this. Okay, something like this. Or maybe rook c7 and rook a7. So maybe that is better. So let me go back. So maybe this is a better way, but you can already see that the king is becoming an Okay, so even if you come like this, I'll simply take the pawn. And when you grab this pawn, my king is closer, it will win all the king side pawns. So this is not good. Okay, so the king becomes very active, and the rook is also very active, and the rook is stuck. Okay, both the rook and king are extremely passive. So we should never play such passive chess. Okay, so taking the d pawn does not work. So for king f3, he can try this. Now the point is to go here and then try to win the pawn. Okay, but he will come here to stop king d5 on time. That is why it was very important to get the king to the center. Now, this is a very interesting position. And you can see that if it is white to play, now he can keep moving the rook back and forth. Okay, rook a1, rook a2, rook a1, rook a2. And then it is very difficult for black to make improvement. Okay, so ultimately what we have to do, so let us see what is the best continuation. Now, if we do this, this is an emotional move because after this, we will never get the king to d5. Okay, now let me just show some variations, king d3. But now you are not able to play king d5, but you will have access like this. So maybe you may want to win pawns like this or go king f3, go king f3 and start try to create some pass pawn here. Okay, but anyway, the king becomes very active, but he can go here. Now the point is when you come like this to activate the king, he can give this check. Now the point is the rook suddenly becomes active and he gets good counterplay. Okay, now if rook a3, king b4 is coming and king c5. Okay, so even if you win the f2 pawn, you will lose all this uh, pawns here and the king can become active if he takes rook a3. So the rook becomes active, king is also reasonably active. So for this reason, we should... Uh, <coughs> okay, so let's see, uh, instead of d5. So here, instead of d5, we can try other means. What else we can do? One you can do this. Now the point is you are fixing the h3 pawn in a backward square. Okay. And then you are also letting the other pawn you can move up, but he will simply wait. Okay. So whatever you do this, his king will remain on e4. And as long as his king remains on e4, 
our king is not getting entry we are not able to advance with our king so you have to drive the king back so that your king can go up so earlier we saw d5 king f5 plan so now we can see f5 and king d5 plan like this now i want to take it with check and then go back to okay, f4 okay so he will play king c3 now after king c3 <coughs> So the point is now if I take rook king to d4 directly, he can advance the pawn. Okay, and now you can try to come. So basically, you have to come to some open file and come back, right? But with the rook on h4, the added advantage is apart from coming back to block the pawn, we can also take rook into h3 check and then try to come back. Okay, so a5, and now you can do this. And now you can take a6. Okay, so here you see the white king becomes very active. Okay, so we cannot take the d4 pawn. So let's go back a little at this point. Okay, so we saw that if rook d4, he starts pushing the pawn very quickly. So you can try something else. First give rook c4 check. King b3 and then take rook d4. Okay, is there any difference? Let us try to see. Here. Now the difference is earlier the king was on c3. Right? In this line, for example, in this line, when he plays a4, the king is on c3. But here, in this case, the king is on b3, not on c3. So this gives us extra possibility. So the point is, instead of coming rook h4, rook h3, rook h8, which takes three moves, I can do this, rook d3 check, king b4, rook h3. But even here, we are reaching uh, something. Okay. And uh, this is also not helping. So we can see that by playing rook a2, he could have made a draw, right, in initial position. So he had two choices, rook a2, rook c3. So rook a2, he was scared that he will lose this pawn. But with rook behind the pass pawn, this pawn, whenever he removes the blockade, you can advance the pawn and that will, that will give extremely good counterplay for black, for white and you could make a draw. But it does not mean rook c3 is losing. Okay, rook c3 is also fine. So this is what happened in the game. Anyway, he played rook a4. Now the point is, suppose you come here, I take the pawn. Now you are not able to advance the pawn because the rook is not behind the pass point. This is the difference. That's why you should have the rook on. A2. But here also, now he cannot give the pawn. So you see, instead of going rook a2 and sacrificing the d pawn to create a pass pawn, he put the rook on the defensive square. Now look at this, compare the two rooks. Black rook is attacking two pawns, not one weakness, it is attacking two weaknesses. And what is the white rook doing? It's defending two weaknesses and hiding behind the pawn. Right. So generally, <clears throat> so generally, we should be very careful not to keep the pawns, keep the rook passive. Okay. So there is some static. Huh? Audio is not clear. So maybe once, can I change the speaker? No static. Okay. Fine. So thank you, Vansh. So he played the rook d3, and this is quite a passive square, but still because of very less number of pawns, and we also have double the pawns, and these pawns can also become weak, f7 and g7 later, when the rook becomes active. Black can still, white can still make a draw. So what is black's idea now? He wants to come to b5 with the king, and then capture rook into d5. So it, the main lesson is we should not 
ignore the king in the end game okay so here you can try to stop my king coming up by playing d5 this is a good idea now the point is if i try to come up like king f6 here you can give a check and my king has to come back to defend this pawn right and then we reach the same position so i am not able to come up with my king and this rook is in an active position it cuts off even if the white king tries to come up the rook will cut off the king so i am not able to improve this so does it mean black cannot make any improvement no we cannot make improvement directly so i will try to do it little in the indirectly like this so with this move i am fixing the h pawn let's say when you come here now i come here now the point is i want to come king e5 okay and if you give check i come here this is the point so i am creating a square hiding square for my king on g6 so now when you come here again i cannot come to the f file whenever i come you will give a check so first i will do this amazing no now when you come up i come like this okay so when i come king f5 if you get rook f3 i'll still come rook e5 so you see with some clever maneuvering i'm not able to directly get my king up but i can play like this and then he cannot stop my king coming up okay <clears throat> fine so he did not play d5 i don't think he saw all this but intuitively he felt d5 is not good and he brought the king white also black also brought the king up now the threat is to go king here now this is already a very critical position okay and black white has to play accurately now normally in end games what happens is we reach positions where we are slightly worse okay and generally what many players do at this point when they are in a slightly worse end game for example here white is slightly worse and black is fine for a win so in such positions most players at the upcoming level they become lazy and then they'll just play some random obvious good looking moves okay but the point is what they will not do is they will not calculate they will stop calculating and they'll just play some good looking moves and that is when we will miss all the critical continuations and then the position will still be equal but to maintain that equality you have to find some do some brilliant analysis and it will become extremely difficult at that point because already we are playing without calculating so whenever you are in a slightly worse end game it is very important you start calculating if there is a force draw find the force draw with good calculation and finish the game don't play some random moves so here what you should have done is give a check okay the point is if you come up you come here now if you take the pawn with check just hide cannot be saved okay <clears throat> and after he takes also he will have only two pawns and we will have two pawns and it should be a draw okay so this is what you should have done so basically you should have gone for rook activity so for this i can come back with king d7 okay and you can still go supporting this again if i come you will give check but now i can try this idea but again you will harass me like this okay and here you can take now the point is when the rook was on e7 my king cannot protect the pawn but now the rook is on c7 i can protect this pawn clever right but still you can do this check now if i do this i will win both the pawns so you have to come king f6 now rook d7 pawn so you see activity now once i take this pawn it will be three versus three so he comes to defend and now just do this positional zoom zoom okay he is not able to push the pawn simply capture you cannot push you cannot push cannot push cannot push cannot move the king because so kind of pawn will come so he has to keep moving rook back and forth i can also move my king back and forth right and there is no win so this would have given a draw 
but <clears throat> he was lazy he did not understand the danger on this game he played the lazy move king is king of three now king d5 okay, king e2. very nice trap like if you <coughs> take the pawn then he will play here and he may even win okay i don't know if it's winning yes outside pass pawn the point is he will come and grab all this okay when the king goes away to the a pawn this king will simply come forward and eat all the pawns but it'll be black who will be struggling for a draw so this was his point he thought anyway whenever he takes i can do this so my pawn is not in danger at all but let us see this idea we have already seen right so he is removing as many pawns from second rank as possible so when the rook comes he will lose only one pawn not all the pawns okay so this is a very good pawn chain so there is only one weak pawn okay instead of two earlier so came here now whenever you come here i will take this and i will lose only one pawn but black will white will lose both a3 and b4 pawns right so he can never come like this so he came here and now b5 now the rook cannot move the pawn okay this pawn cannot move this pawn cannot move this pawn cannot move okay and black has many waiting moves he can simply wait with the rook put him in zook zone so the only thing that can move is king okay now he played here so what black wants to do is he wants to come like this okay when you play king c2 i want to give rook e2 check and win something like this or i want to come here and give check like this okay so this is point this is his point so he came here and now he's playing for zook zone king can, rook can never move because rook is defending both the pawns so whichever way he moves he will lose one of the pawns right so he has to keep moving the king only and now he comes here zook zone beautiful zook zone no so i'm just going to wait here if you make pawn move okay so you have to you are forced to move the rook if you come king c2 then rook here is lost okay so this is a zook zone so white played nice he gave this check you take king d4 and f very nice so this idea he could have gone in the beginning of the end game he could have played rook a2 and given the d4 pawn and pushed but he was greedy trying to save the d pawn which he eventually lost but now look at the king king has advanced so much right from g8 it has come to d4 now anyway he is going back to the old plan so now it is very important we come here instead if you try to win with rook e2 tactic it is not working okay and if you play d4 here white even wins pawn cannot be stopped so at this point you have to play this idea push so i'll come here so you come here come here come here draw okay so rook e2 is not working so he played here attacking the pawn and now very important so block the pass pawn so white has managed to black has managed to improve the king and win the pawn here right so white does well he is simply going to play rook a1 rook a2 rook a1 rook a2 now this rook is very passive so he came here so he feels when the king comes up my king will also come okay so we drive the king back now if he tries to come he will come up with the king okay so he cannot let the white king come up so he changes direction Now the point is, if you come a5, rook check, king here. Now, this is very tempting to give check and win, right? But here he has a brilliant idea. Check here on a6. You need to pawn a7. Pawn cannot be stopped. The black rook is stuck somewhere. 
Okay, you have to do that text. So for this reason, you should not go rook h2 because of rook check and pawn push. So you should come rook here. Very important. Okay, and when you come here, you come here. So now I'm going to win this pawn and win the game. Okay, the king is too far. Okay, so for this reason, um, He did not play a5. Okay, king e1. Now he wants to push the pawn. On Now he comes up. He cannot come here. You know, beautiful. So what has happened? King is the best blockader in endgame. So now the king has stopped the pawn. So with the rook, he will try to win this pawn. So black has a very clean idea. He's going to come here, come here, take the pawn. Okay. So he played rook a3, defending this pawn. Rook f4. He's implementing the idea. Yeah. Now, if you play rook a3, then king b4. He will lose one of the pawns. Rook cannot defend both. So he tries to activate the king. Now So beautifully, he won all the pawns. Now he has three pawns versus one. So this ending is winning. A few more technical points were there. So let us see it quickly. So he played rook e2. Now the point is activity. Okay, generally, two versus one is a draw. So if he manages to come and win this g pawn, it will be a draw. Okay. So play rook f4. Now there is one more trap. This is also interesting. The point is, if you come here, I will come here and save my pawns. And then the king will come up. Okay. But here, the, he has a brilliant move, check. Now, if you come down, he will give check and win. If you come up, when I come, you don't have to care someone. So for this reason, king b6 is not working. So you play king f4, rook f4. So you see, even at the very end, there are traps. So now if you come here, I will simply win f2. Two connected pass pawns will win. So he played king e3. Now the king is coming. So he's going to come with the king and three pawn, two pawns up will win. So he's giving cut off. Now the king is cut off. Okay. So first he takes control of all the entry points. He's not in at all in a hurry. So he's waiting the cutoff. Now we have to somehow get the king close to the pawn and it is done. So he's taking the help of the rook. So he's going to come like this. Block the c5, it's over. So he came here. Now he wants to come here and take. So now we clear the second one. Now he it's like he wants to come here, but now at this this is closed. Take very important. If you have fighting g6, we lose the pawn. Yeah, we don't have to do this. Okay, so you see a beautiful end game, a lot of interesting moments, and uh, we had only like half an hour to analyze all these positions, not enough time. So I had to rush a little faster, but I have covered all the important variations in this end game. So I request you to those who are interested, you can again. Uh, go through this endgame a bit slowly and uh, try to appreciate the value of each one. Okay, fine. So thank you everyone for attending this session. We'll meet again next week, same time with another interesting question.